The titration is between sodium carbonate and HCl. Let's first take a look at the sodium carbonate solution. When you place sodium carbonate in aqueous medium, it's going to ionize into sodium ions and carbonate ions. Carbonate ions in the aqueous medium hydrolyze forming bicarbonate ions and OH-. So, the sodium carbonate solution is basic. Therefore, it can react with HCl and give rise to a neutralization step. The reaction will not stop at that point. Bicarbonate can further hydrolyze in the presence of water and form carbonic acid and hydroxide. Again, hydroxide is formed and this hydroxide can react with H+, giving rise to a neutralization reaction. So, when you carry out a titration between sodium carbonate and HCl, uh, it will take place in two steps. First, carbonate will form the bicarbonate ion in one step and this reaction will take place at a pH around 8 to 10. And the second step is the reaction with bicarbonate with sodium hydroxide. This reaction will take place at a pH around 3 to 5. So this will be the second step of the titration. The first step, as you can see, the pH change takes place close to the pH change of the phenolphthalein indicator. So you can use phenolphthalein indicator and determine the first endpoint. And the second step of the titration takes place around the pH change of the methyl orange indicator. So you can use the methyl orange indicator to determine the second endpoint of the titration. Now let's see how you can carry out the titration of sodium carbonate with HCl using phenolphthalein and methyl orange indicators. In here we use bulk pipette to transfer sodium bicarbonate into titration flask. When you are transferring from bulk pipette, make sure to keep the bulk pipette in straight and the titration flask in angle. As the first indicator, we use phenolphthalein in here. Use two drops of phenolphthalein to, the, to add the titration flask. In here you can observe the color pink in your titration flask. Okay, let's go directly to the titration.
at the first end point, you can see the color change from pink to colorless. When you are done with your recording your first end, end point, then take methyl orange indicator and add two drops into your titration flask. Now start your second titration. In here we add methyl orange to the same titration flask as well we can use a separate titration for adding methyl orange and keep it process. As you saw, sodium carbonate HCl reaction has two endpoints. The first endpoint is detected using the phenophthalene indicator. Phenophthalene indicator initially in the sodium carbonate medium gave a pink color and the color change from pink to colorless is taken as the first endpoint. Sodium carbonate when reacts with HCl gives you so bicarbonate, water and chloride ions. End of this titration or end of this reaction is detected using the phenophthalene indicator. And as you can see, the stoichiometry between carbonate and HCl is one to one. 
So if you want to determine the concentration of carbonate or sodium carbonate in the solution, you can determine this using the number of moles of HCl used in the titration. The number of moles of HCl used in the titration is equal to the concentration of HCl times the volume of HCl used up at the first endpoint. The number of moles of sodium carbonate available in the solution is equal to the number of moles of HCl used up. Therefore, the number of moles of sodium carbonate available in the solution is equal to concentration of HCl times the volume of HCl used up at the first endpoint. The concentration of sodium carbonate is equal to the number of sodium carbonate moles divided by the volume of the sample. So the concentration of sodium carbonate is equal to concentration of HCl times the volume of HCl used up at the first endpoint divided by the volume of the sample. What remains in the titration flask at the end of the first endpoint is bicarbonate ions. Bicarbonate ions hydrolyze in the aqueous medium and form carbonic and OH-. When you add methyl orange indicator to this solution, it gives a yellow color to the solution. Now let's take a look at the titration between bicarbonate and HCl. Bicarbonate reacts with HCl giving carbonic acid, water and chloride ions. Endpoint of this reaction is determined by the change and color of the methyl orange indicator. Methyl orange color changes from yellow to red to detect this second endpoint. At the second endpoint, the reaction that takes place is given to you in the slide, which is bicarbonate reacts with HCl, giving carbonic acid, water, and chloride ions. The stoichiometry between bicarbonate ions and HCl is 1 to 1. So using this, uh, in point volume also you can calculate the concentration of carbonate ions initially available in the solution. The, at the second endpoint, the number of HCl moles used is equal to the concentration of HCl times the volume of HCl used up at the second endpoint. So uh, the, since the stoichiometry is 1 to 1, the number of bicarbonate moles available in the solution is also equal to the number of HCl moles used up. Number of bicarbonate moles are equal to the number of carbonate moles initially available in the solution. Therefore, the number of sodium carbonate moles available in the solution is equal to the number of HCl moles used, which is concentration of HCl times the volume of HCl used up at the second endpoint. The concentration of sodium carbonate can be determined by dividing the number of sodium carbonate moles available by the volume of the sample. The concentration of sodium carbonate is equal to concentration of HCl times the volume of HCl used up at the second endpoint divided by the volume of the sample. In the experiment, what you saw was the uh, sodium carbonate was titrated with HCl initially with the phenolphthalein indicator and when the phenolphthalein indicator color change is observed, methyl orange was added to the same titration flask and the titration was continued until we observed the methyl orange color change. You can carry out the same titration by adding only methyl orange indicator to the sample solution which contains sodium carbonate. When methyl orange is used as the indicator, the reaction taking place uh, with HCl is given to you in the slide, which is sodium carbonate reacts with 
2 moles of HCl giving you carbonic acid, 2 moles of water and 2 chloride ions or 2 sodium chloride ions. And you can see the stoichiometry between sodium carbonate and HCl is 1 to 2. Now if you want to determine the concentration of sodium carbonate in the initial solution, First, we have to determine the number of HCl moles used in the titration, which is equal to the concentration of HCl times the volume of HCl at the end point. The stoichiometry between HCl and sodium carbonate initially available in the solution is 2 to 1. So, the number of sodium carbonate moles available in the medium is equal to the number of HCl moles divided by 2. The number of sodium carbonate moles is equal to concentration of HCl times the volume of HCl used up at the end point divided by 2. Now the concentration of sodium carbonate can be determined by dividing the number of moles of sodium carbonate by the volume of the sample. Therefore, the concentration of sodium carbonate is equal to concentration of HCl times the volume of HCl at the end point divided by 2 divided by the volume of the sample. 